Okay, so welcome back. Today we're going to look at a free and open source .NET library called CSV Helper. And you may have guessed from the name that this software helps you to interact with CSV or comma separated value files. Now, comma separated value files are extremely important. They're used in many industries, businesses. We've used them a lot on this channel. In the science and engineering world, they're used everywhere. Uh, if you were gathering data from devices, you may store those results. Maybe you're gathering data every second from some device, some data acquisition device. You may grab that data and store it in a CSV file every second. And when you're finished grabbing data, you can bring that into your software and analyze it. You could also use it if you are analyzing a physical system or a network of components and you have the user define the, the components in that network and how they're connected together and then you read that CSV file with all those device parameters into your software and the software will generate a network of all the components and do a real-time physical or electrical simulation and give you the results. So many, many uses in the science and engineering world. In the business world, it may be like a database. A CSV file might be a database where each line in the file is maybe a person or an account, and the values in the line specify the names, the account numbers, and that kind of thing. So very, very important that you understand CSV files. And CSV Helper is one tool that you may decide to use to help you when interacting with those files. So let's take a look at a couple of different formats you may encounter of CSV files and get an idea of how CSV Helper might help. So here is a CSV file, something we've used in recent videos, where we are measuring the performance every second, measuring some parameters, or GPU, or graphics processing unit. And you can see here we've got a date, a temperature, a GPU temperature, a fan speed, uh, percent load, and perf cap reason. We talked about these in a different video. But basically every second it gives you the time and the value for four different parameters that we're measuring. This is very common when you're doing data acquisition from engineering or science devices. And then you can store that in a CSV file and later on access it and um, as we've shown on this channel, chart them or analyze them in your software. Now that is basically a reading every time increment that you've got. Another format we talked about briefly was that if you want to simulate a system of components all tied together, um, you might have a format like this. And this is basically what we talked about uh, earlier in this channel where we are simulating an electric power system with real-world physical equipment tied together uh, to feed your home or office. And it's, it's a network used by your power company and other power companies to tie everything together. And the user can define the parameters, the devices in a CSV file, and you can load that into your software. It can take all that data and generate the network and do the simulation. So for this CSV file, each line Rather than having a time date and some readings, each line represents a physical real-world device and the parameters of that device. So the first one is bus data. And you may see, you may notice down the street from your house that they have a utility substation that looks something like this. And a bus is a connection of physical wires. And so we've got a name of the bus, a voltage, and some other parameters. We've also got load data, which is how much load is being drawn by the substation. And then generator data, these big, large physical generators generating electricity. And here we've got two lines. Each line represents one generator and its parameters. So you may have a CSV file. You can see these values separated by commas. The CSV file is now each line represents a real world physical object. So now you may think, well, CSV files, pretty simple, right? I mean, all you have to do is read in a line, like in C-sharp, you read in a line, you do a split and specify the comma delimiter, and it will automatically give you an array of values, and you're pretty much done. There's nothing else to do. Why do I need CSV helper? 
Well, in many cases, you may be right. It may be easier to do it yourself. However, as we talked about, where you have one line represents a person or an account or a real world physical object, you may choose to want to represent each line, each object as a class, like in C sharp, a class for each line of the CSV file, you instantiate, for example, a bus class and you fill in all the properties for this bus class. And then you generate a next one with a different name and different properties. And then you can go through and you can have a separate, in this case, a load class, and you can read those and fill in their properties and then generators. And it turns out that is really the use case for CSV helper. It does that automatically and it makes it so much easier if you are going to take each line of your CSV file and instantiate a class, it automatically fills in the properties of that class with whatever values you've specified in the CSV file. So that's a great way, if you're gonna generate classes from each line of your CSV file, uh, CSV Helper is wonderful because it automatically parses this and puts the values in the appropriate properties. Now, if you're doing something like this, where you have just a time and date and a reading, you may decide to take a different approach. So here's an Excel version of that file where you can see we've got dates, temperature, and fan speed. You may decide that you don't want to have a class instantiation for each reading. That doesn't really make a lot of sense. What makes more sense is maybe have a class for GPU temperature and then have a property which is all of the values of that GPU temperature and then the associated time and date. So instead of having a horizontal class, you may decide to have these as vertical classes where you take a column of data and make a class, like a trace class that you can later chart. Now, another thing to keep in mind is if you were doing data acquisition like this, where you've got a date and measurements of different parameters, it's quite common to have many different columns of, as the user selects different parameters for that particular CSV, you might have five more columns here for different other things that you're measuring. And if you're trying to map those to a horizontal class, you're going to you know, have to be able to allow for multiple numbers of properties and how to deal with those. So it can get kind of complicated. So again, you might want to choose just to have a trace. And each time you have an additional column, you just instantiate a new trace class. But that's kind of up to you. So now there's a, a couple more things you need to be aware of regarding CSV files and CSV helper. And one of them is that most people, I think, assume that a CSV file has a very simple format. And that format is what you see here. You've got the first line always has what's called a header, and it's got comma separated names that name the values in the following lines. So it assumes the first line is a header with some names. All the other lines contain data. That's it. There's no comments. There's no change in format. It's always this header that describes every single line, what the values are. You don't change what the values are. You don't go to something like we were talking about before, where you've got different types of objects in the, the same CSV file that have different formats and everything. That's not what a lot of people think about CSV files. They think it's this very simple header with data. Now there is also what's called an RFC, Request for Comments in the Industry, uh, RFC 4801. And that's basically where some people get together and say, hey, we need to have some uh, basic requirements for a CSV file and we'll write them down, send them out and let people comment. It's not a standard. It doesn't mean if you're going to do a CSV file, it has to follow this simple format. No, uh, it's kind of a, hey, here's what we should do in general. And people kind of have accepted that as the CSV file format. In the real world, in the science and engineering world, uh, there is nothing that says you can't have different format files where data is separated by commas and it might be more complicated like this with different types of objects. You've got to keep in mind that CSV Helper is written pretty much in line with this RFC 4801, 
which is, it's a very simple format with a header and some data. So if you don't have a CSV file in that format, if you've got something different like this, you're going to have to be aware of some things that you're need, going to need to do in CSV Helper to allow you to uh, read files like this. For example, we've got here, we've got some forwards, two forward slash lines which indicate a comment in much software. In CSV Helper, no. You have to tell it that when you've got a forward slash, that's a comment and to ignore it. So now let's take a look at some of the CSV Helper code that we can use to read in a file and generate classes and populate them. So here is a simple C Sharp Visual Studio Windows Forms application. And um, all it's going to do is it's going to read in much of this CSV file in this format. And we'll show you uh, how to do it in more complicated files so that you can do it easily in a non-complicated file. So we're going to read in, uh, we're going to ignore the, the comments, we're going to read in the data. And you can see here at the end of, for example, this set of data, this, these bus objects, it has a zero which says, okay, we're done with that, we're going to move on to the load data. And then that's got a zero, and then there's another zero for unincluded data, and so on. So we're going to have to figure out how to ignore the comment lines and how to jump around when we get a zero to move on to the next one, and so on. So the first thing we're going to have to do is we're going to have to install CSV Helper. As with anything, you go to Tools, NuGet Package Manager, Manage NuGet Packages for Solution, and just here, search on CSV Helper, and just download and install the CSV Helper by Josh Close. Now in 2023, it's got about 172 million downloads, so it's really, really popular. Honestly, I'm a bit confused about that, but anyway. So you install that, and let's take a look at this code. Uh, using statements, using CSV Helper, keep in mind it's capital C, lowercase sv, so that can get you hung up. Um, also using CSV Helper configuration, you're going to need that if you've got a, a non-standard file like this. System collections generic, we're going to generate three classes of objects, our bus, our load, and our generator, and we're going to make lists of those, so we, we need lists. System Globalization, System I.O., System Windows Forms. And that's it for the using statements. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to define the input file name. And that's going to be whatever you've got. Here's my file name that I'm going to bring in, but you can name it whatever you want. And then we're going to instantiate a public list of buses, loads, and generators. So we, we've got three classes that we're going to have lists of those classes. And in our case, we're going to have five buses five loads, and two generators. So let's first take a look at the classes. As you can see here, we've also got, on the very beginning, we've got a what's called a case ID. It's got some numbers defining some general things about this data. So we're going to start out with a case ID class that just reads in two numbers, a public int ID and a public double called MVA base, and that's a case ID class. So the next one is going to be a bus class, public class bus. We have an integer bus number, string, name, float, bus kv, int, bus type. You can name whatever you want, but just very simple. We've got four properties for the bus class. And then load class, same thing. We've got five properties, bus number, ID, status, megawatt, megavar. You can put whatever you want in here. And then generator. We've got a public class generator. It's got a whole bunch of data. Um, you don't need all this, but this is just what we've got here. So we've got lists of those. The um, CSV helper is going to instantiate each time we read in one line, it's going to instantiate a bus or a line or a generator. This is a very simple application. We've got the standard initialized component and then just one method called CSV file reader. And on my Form 1, my design, I've just got a text box to give us some feedback. So let's take a look at the CSV file reader. Now, we're going to use a stream reader in concert with the CSV. So um, using stream reader, we're going to call it reader, is a new stream reader. And we're going to use this input file name. So we're setting up a stream reader using a using statement so that when we're done, it will free the memory. Now, there's something very important you need to be aware of. 
again if you're using a non-standard CSV file. First of all, we need to set up CSV Helper to ignore these comment lines. And you're going to have to know how to do that. And another thing about free and open source software, if you have done this years previously with CSV Helper, the format has changed. Um, they're certainly free to change their format. The code that might work five years ago no longer works. You have to reformat it to get rid of these comments. So just keep that in mind. To do that, we're going to make a CSV Helper configuration class. We're going to instantiate it and we're going to call it config and it's a new CSV configuration and we're going to use culture info invariant culture and that will just make sure that we have the standard uh, delimiters and everything else set up. So var config is a new CSV configuration with culture info invariant culture and what we have to do this is where we're going to tell the CSV reader Number one, to allow comments. Again, the RFC and CSV helper assume there are no comments in your uh, CSV file. We're going to say allow comments equals true. We have comments. And we can say comment equals the character forward slash. When you do that, it will now say, oh, if I see a forward slash in the first character, I will ignore that line. Also, you'll notice that this doesn't have the header that the standard CSV file is expecting. It's got a comment and then it goes directly into some numbers. So we have to tell it as part of the configuration has header record is false. Very, very important. You need to tell it if it's not a standard CSV, you need to tell it. Now we need to instantiate a new CSV reader. We're going to be reading the file using the stream reader and the CSV configuration we just developed. To do that, CSV Reader, we're going to call it CSV, is a new CSV Reader, and we're using the Reader, the Stream Reader that we defined, and this configuration. So we're saying apply this configuration we just developed, and that will define our new CSV Reader. So now that we've got it all set up, we have to jump into the file and go to the first line. Since we said ignore the comment line, it should jump into this first line and start parsing the data and making a case ID class out of it. Now, one of the unfortunate things about free and open source software, and CSV Reader is no different, is terminology. There is a method in the CSV Reader called read. You might think that it reads the first line. No, it doesn't it steps down, it advances to the next line in the file and then allows you to read it. But it doesn't do any reading, it just steps. It increments, it advances, it doesn't read. So unfortunately they called it read, it has nothing to do with read. It just moves your pointer down to the, the next line in the file. In our case, we're at the first line in the file. So this is just advanced to the first line. Now what we can do is we can grab this line, which has our case ID with only two properties, and it can convert that to a case ID. So what we're doing is we're saying, here's our case ID class that we defined, and we're gonna call it case ID lowercase, and we're gonna use the csv.getRecord, and in brackets we say get record and convert it to a case ID. So it's going to grab that line, convert it to a case ID class, and then return it as this case ID. So now we have successfully grabbed the object, the case ID object, and here what we can do is we can, in our text box, we can print out the two variables. We've got an ID and an MVA base. So all we have to do is text box one append text, ID is this case ID dot ID property to string, and then we can do the next one is the case ID dot MVA base to string. And that will give us feedback. Yes, we successfully read that. So let's start this and run it and just see what we get. So we've got our ID equals two, which is correct. And our MVA equals a hundred. All right, so we're all set. So it successfully read the first line. Now keep in mind, we are still at that first line. All right, we are still here. We read this, but we haven't moved. So we have to then do a read, CSV read, to step down to the next line and ignore this comment line. Again, it's not reading. 
It's just stepping. It's incrementing. It's advancing. So now that we have stepped to this next line, we can start reading these five lines and assign them as bus classes. So what we're going to do is say while CSV get field. What that will do is that will, at this line, it will get a field that you specify, and we're specifying zero, which is a zero element, which is a one here. If it's not equal to zero, so we're checking to make sure we're not at this ending zero. So if it's not zero, that means it's a legitimate line and we're going to read it in and assign it to a bus class. So get field reads the first field in the line. If it's not equal to zero, we are going to do a buses.add csv.getRecord bus. All right, like we did before, we're going to take that line of data and instantiate a new bus class and apply those values to the properties and add that to the list of buses. So at this point, we have grabbed this first line, converted it to a bus object, filled the properties in, and now we're going to read to the next line. We're going down to the step two, and we're going to do a read. Then we're going to go back to the while loop. Is that a zero? If it's not zero, do the same thing. Buses add CSV, get record, and convert it to a bus object, and we're going to do it for the second one. And we're going to read down, we're going to step down to the third line and do the same thing. So while we're not hitting this zero line, we're just going to keep reading these in and converting them to bus objects. Now, when we do get a zero, we're going to jump down here and we're going to say, okay, we finished reading and we're going to say uh, how many buses, buses.count, buses. And that's going to say, okay, we read five buses. So now we are at this zero, right? We've encountered a zero. We said we have read five buses, but we're still at this zero. So we have to, again, do a CSV read to step down to the next line and start the load data. So we do a CSV read, and now we go and do exactly the same code, except we're going to get the record and feed it into a load object. While CSV get field, while the zero field is not equal to zero, loads.add CSV get record load, and that will populate the first load object, then do a read, check that that's not zero, and do it again. And then when we're done with that, we've read all the loads, we will do finish reading loads.count loads. So that's it. It's really straightforward, but you really have to be aware of things like read doesn't mean read. And if you have a non-standard CSV file, you've got to set up the configuration and so on. So now that we know how to read a file using CSV helper and convert it into objects, class objects, let's look at how we can write the same data from all those class objects to a CSV file and that will help us to verify that what we read is correct. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to have another public string, and this is going to be output file name. We're going to name it whatever you want. And we have the same list of buses, loads, and generators, but we're going to add one method called CSV file writer. And here is the CSV file writer. It's going to be very simple. And like we did before, we're going to use stream writer. We're going to call it writer is a new stream writer, and we're going to give it that output file name. And then we're going to do a using CSV writer, not reader. We're going to call it CSV as a new CSV writer. And we're going to feed it that stream writer called writer and then culture info and variant culture like we did before. And all you have to do is really easy. You have to just take that list of buses and the list of loads and the list of generators and do a CSV write records and pass each of those to the CSV write records. And it should write all of those lists of objects, all of that data, to the CSV file. Really, really very straightforward. So let's run that and see what we get. So we finished reading five buses, five loads, and two generators. Let's take a look at the output file and see if it's there. Well, here is our output, and we have added this load flow output.txt. So I'm going to double click on it. And here is the file, and you can see it's got five buses with the correct names, and it's got this load data, and then it's got these two generators. Now, it also has included this header, and I'm not sure how to get rid of that. You can figure that out as a homework project, but basically it prints everything out the same as what we uh, read in, so it's a great way to check that everything is read in correctly. 
So that's about it for CSV Helper. Um, it's good if you need it and you've got to be careful about some stuff. But uh, for what it does, it does a real nice job in converting CSV files into uh, class objects. So that's about it for this one. If you like any of these videos, I encourage you to hit the like button, subscribe, hit the bell notifications. But most of all, please let others know that we're here so we get some views. Really appreciate it. Otherwise, take care. Have a really good day. Thanks.